Okay, so we're going to look at um, mirrors and, and how we use them when we're driving, yeah? Um, often people will tell you to check your mirrors when you're driving, but they won't tell you why. And we need to look at uh, specifically why we check the mirrors and how we use them, and look at the mirrors themselves, how they work. So, there are basically five different types of mirror checks that we do. The first one is an MSM check. Mirror, signal, maneuver, yeah? So if we're driving on the motorway or dual carriageway or if we want to turn left or right, we check our mirrors, we signal, and we carry out the maneuver. Uh, when we check our mirrors, we always check both mirrors. I'll, I'll come to that later on, but, but whenever we check our mirrors, we, we, we want to have a, uh, a view of what's happening on both sides of the vehicle. It matters that we know what's happening on both sides. When we're driving a large vehicle like a bus, um, the back end tends to swing out, so even if we're turning right, the tail of the vehicle will tend to swing to the left, so we must know what's on the left-hand side. And we scan the road from left to right, so when we check our mirrors, I prefer to check from left to right. Um, so, as I said, the first type of check is an MSM check, mirror signal manoeuvre. The second type of check is a follow-through check. So a follow-through check is, for example, uh, we move out to overtake a parked vehicle. As we pass the parked vehicle, we check the left mirror to make sure that the back wheels are past that vehicle before we steer in. Or, if we're driving down a road and we've got somebody standing in the middle of the road on a traffic island, as we pass them, we check the right mirror uh, just to make sure that we haven't hit them and that they're safe as we pass them. Um, another example of a follow-through check would be if we overtake a cyclist. As we go past the cyclist, we check the left mirror before we come back to the left. Yeah. Um, the next type of mirror check is a closing gap check. So for example, if we've got parked vehicles on both sides of a narrow road, um, we check our mirrors before we go through that gap, because we need to make sure that we've got enough clearance to both sides, we need to make sure that we, we position the vehicle in the centre of the gap. Now, when we're driving down the road, we shouldn't be using our mirrors to tell us when we're in the correct position. From our driver's seat, we should be able to just look at the road ahead, and with our peripheral vision, we should know if we're too close to the left or too close to the right. Learner drivers tend to dwell on the left mirror too much to tell them where they are on the road, and this causes a problem that they, they can't see things coming towards them in the distance, and they don't see things on the right-hand side of the road developing. Um, that's why it's so important that we use peripheral vision, just by looking at the road ahead, looking straight ahead, that we know where we are on the road. But as we come to the gap that we're going through, we check our mirrors before we enter, yeah, because we've got a closing gap, just to confirm that we are in the correct position and we've got enough clearance. Yeah? And obviously once we go through that gap, then we do a follow-through check to make sure that we've cleared the gap on both sides and we haven't hit anything. Yeah? So closing gap checks going in, follow-through checks coming out. Yeah? Um, the next type of check is simply, um, it's a positional check. So if you were driving down the motorway in the middle of the night and there was nothing around you, you've got no other reason to check your mirrors, every four or five seconds just check your left mirror and your right mirror just to see if there's any vehicles coming up behind you fast and just to make sure that you're in the middle of your lane and not wandering. Yeah, it's important, even if there's nothing around you, it's important to do the positional check every four or five seconds, so you're just updating yourself with what's happening behind you. Uh, there are so many times when you will be with somebody in a car driving on the motorway, and there's nothing around them, they're just staring at the road ahead, and they've got no idea if there's a police car coming up fast behind them, they've got no idea you know, if there's an emergency vehicle coming up the hard shoulder, if they're stuck in traffic, there could be an emergency vehicle coming up the hard shoulder, and they've got no idea because they're just staring blankly at the road ahead, and that's just rubbish. Uh, we want to be updating ourselves every four or five seconds with a positional check just to see what's going on around us, what's going on in the world around us. In fact, when I'm driving, even when I'm sitting in traffic lights, I'm constantly checking my mirrors um, because I want to see if there's a cyclist trying to you know, squeeze up through the traffic or whether there's an emergency vehicle um, you know, quite far behind who's trying to make his way through. Um, so I'm constantly checking my mirrors. So we've got MSM checks, mirror signal maneuver. We've got follow through checks after we overtake or pass something. We've got closing gap checks, and we've got positional checks. And, of course, in the highway code, it tells us that you must check your mirrors before changing the speed or direction. So, check um, before 
or changing speed. For changing speed and direction. A good example of that would be uh, as you slow down for a speed bump, you check your mirrors and you start to brake. As the vehicle goes over the speed bump, you check your mirrors first and then you accelerate. So what you're doing is you're tying your mirrors in with what your feet are doing with pedals. Yeah? Your mirror checks are tied in with your speed. If you're coming up to a set of traffic lights on a 40 mile an hour road, you check your mirrors and you start to brake. As the vehicle is slowing down, you check your mirrors again at about 25 miles an hour. Then you check your mirrors again at 10 miles an hour. And then you check your, check your mirrors just before the vehicle comes to a stop. Obviously, you don't want to come to a stop. You want to slow the vehicle down in the last couple of bus lanes and keep crawling. But if you have to stop, check your, vehicle, check your mirrors just before the vehicle comes to a stop. Yeah? So we're monitoring the mirrors as we're slowing down. Because as we're slowing down, that's when other vehicles are going to be catching up with us. If you imagine, if you overtake a cyclist on a, on a 40 mile an hour road, he can't keep up with you. But as you're stopping at the traffic lights, he's going to be catching up with you. He probably won't stop at the lights, he might go straight through. So you want to know what that cyclist is doing that you've just overtaken. You want to know what he's doing as he catches up with you. Yeah? Whether he's going to try and squeeze through on the left or pass you on the right. So it's important that you monitor your mirrors when there's a significant change in speed. Also, obviously, when you're, whenever you're changing direction, that means before you steer. So if we're going into a, a right-hand bend, check your mirrors as you enter the bend. So just to make sure we've got the correct position. When we're about halfway around the bend, check your mirrors again just to make sure you're not cutting over the white line. And as we come out of the bend, Check your mirrors, and then go on the gas. So again, that last mirror check there as we straighten up is tied in to our change in speed because just when we start to accelerate, we check our mirrors again. Now, you're going to be watching this thinking, thinking to yourself, there's a hell of a lot of mirror checks to be done, and there are. Yeah? It's important that we know what's happening from what I call a global perspective. So if you imagine looking at the vehicle from the top down, we know what's happening around the vehicle at 360 degrees at all times. There's a lot of mirror checks to be done, but if you're smart, you can use the mirrors in such a way that you get two for the price of one. And what I mean by that is, um, just imagine, you're going down the road, and we've got a parked vehicle here, and a zebra crossing. Yeah? So what I would do is, I would approach the zebra crossing, come off the gas, check my mirrors as I'm slowing down. I see the parked vehicle. So as I go through the zebra crossing, I check my mirrors to make sure I've cleared the crossing safely and then start to steer. I indicate if necessary, but start to steer around the parked vehicle. So I'm using the same set of mirrors that I've used for the follow-through check as I've gone through the zebra crossing to allow me to steer around, around the parked vehicle. As I get around the parked vehicle, I know that as I pass that parked vehicle, I've got to do a follow-through check. So I check my mirrors and I get on the gas. So that set of mirrors, as I pass that parked car, covers me to steer into the left and also to accelerate the vehicle. So if you're, if you're thinking about how you use the mirrors, you can actually get away with using them a lot less. But by using them intelligently, you can still see everything that you need to see. About the mirrors themselves, on your car or on a bus, the mirrors um, are slightly different. Car mirrors tend to be very flat to give you a better impression of the distances behind you. They sometimes curve at the end, and they're a little bit what we call convex, and they do say that things sometimes are closer than they appear to be in the mirrors. Um, the mirrors that we have on the buses, they're quite large, and they're made from polycarbonate. They're not glass at all, they're made from like a very uh, durable plastic. And they're a lot more convex, so they give you a much wider angle because of the size of the vehicle, we need to be able to see more clearly in the mirrors. They give you a much wider angle, but they make things appear to be a lot closer than they are. So, um, sorry, they make things are in fact a lot closer than they appear to be. That things things um, in the mirror look very small, but they're closer than they appear. Um, a good example of where there can be a problem is on a motorway. When you're looking in those mirrors, things in the distance look very small, and although they might be behind you because the vehicle is 35 feet long or more, um, you don't realize that sometimes that the car that you're seeing in the mirror is actually next to the back of the bus. 
So, because your brain's conditioned to think, well, the vehicle that you're driving is 15 feet long, you look at the car behind you and you think, right, I can move out. What you don't realise is that car is actually next to the back wheels on the bus. It's closer than you think. That's why sometimes learner drivers tend to you know, pull out and affect other vehicles when they're changing lanes, because um, even if you're driving a lorry, you know, the lorry might be 45, 50 feet long, you've got to think about where the back of your vehicle is, and if you're changing lanes, the car that's you know, in, in the other lane needs to be at least three seconds behind the back of your vehicle. So, whereas, you know, in, in a car, if you're changing lanes, you might need a gap of, say, 50 or 60 feet to change lanes safely. In a bus or a lorry, you're going to need a gap of maybe 100, 110 feet to change lanes safely, because you, you must remember that the, the three-second gap between you and the vehicle behind you, the safe gap, starts from the back of your vehicle, not from where you are. So you need to have that, that extra distance, yeah? And the other thing you've got to remember is when you look in those mirrors, because the items are quite quite small, they may be travelling faster than you appear. Now, if you're using the mirrors intelligently, if you're driving along the road, you should be able to tell me what colour is the car behind you in the middle lane, or what's happening on the hard shoulder, yeah? Without even looking in your mirrors, because what we're looking for is that you have a constant image in your brain of what's going on behind you. If you're using your mirrors regularly, you know, you, you'll know what colour the car in the middle lane is. So when you need to change lanes, you, you look in that mirror and you, you expect to see, um, you know, if it's a green car, you expect to see that. The other thing that we're, we're, we're doing with our mirrors is we're trying to not just see what's there, but also see um, how they're driving. So, for example, if you're driving along and you see uh, a car in that middle lane and he's, say, 200 feet behind you, and then two seconds later you check the mirror and he's 100 feet behind you, you should expect that the next time you check the mirror, he's going to be right next to you. Because you've got, a, you've got an impression of the speed that that vehicle's travelling at. And so many times when I'm teaching learner drivers to drive, they look in the mirrors and they'll see things, but they've got no idea how fast those vehicles are travelling. Um, and if you're travelling on a motorway or a dual carriageway, you have to constantly know how fast the vehicle's behind are catching you up. Because if you have to change lanes suddenly, not that we should, we should never take an evasive lane-changing manoeuvre, it's safer to stop her. If something happens in front of you, like the rear vehicle in front of you, breaks down or it has a puncture and there's no hard shoulder and the vehicle comes to a stop in, in the carriageway, you know, if you're aware of what's behind you at all times, if you know that there's nothing behind you for at least five or six seconds, you can check your mirrors, you can signal, you can get over nice and quickly. But if you know that there are vehicles coming up fast behind you and there's absolutely no chance of changing lanes, then obviously you've got no option, you have to stop. But it's important not just to look at the mirrors, but also understand what the vehicles behind you are doing, how fast they're catching you up, yeah? And that takes time. I said to you before that there was a reason that we always check both mirrors when we're changing our position. And on motorways and dual carriageways, it's a lot more important. I'll explain why to you. Um, imagine we're driving in the first lane. Yeah? And by the way, there is no slow, medium or fast lane. The speed limit in all three lanes on the motorway is the same, yeah? at 70 miles an hour. So we just refer to them as lanes 1, 2 and 3. Yeah, or there's four lanes, one, two, three, four. Um, imagine a situation where you're moving from the first lane, the middle lane, to overtake a slow vehicle. Yeah, it might be a slow lorry or something like that. So you check your mirrors and you signal. And you intend to move out the middle lane. Yeah. Now what you haven't seen is much, much further behind you there's a vehicle travelling fast, and I've actually witnessed this. Um, I was on the motorway with somebody uh, a few years ago, and we were um, driving along in the first lane, probably about 50 or 60 miles an hour, and there was a police car coming up, and the police car was taking the exit off the motorway. And the vehicle, well, the police car was probably travelling, I'd say, at about a, in excess of 100 miles an hour. I mean, it was travelling really, really fast. And what they did was they came straight across us, and there was very little traffic on the road, and they went from the outside lane straight onto the slip road. And they can do that because of the speed that they're travelling. I mean, you know, they pass as if, as if we were stationary. So they can do that. Um, but, you can imagine, if we were changing lanes, well, we weren't at the time, but if we were changing lanes, and we hadn't seen that police car coming across the front of us, what would have happened? So it's really important that when you're in the first lane, moving out to the middle. You're not just looking at what's coming up in the middle lane, you're also looking at what's coming up in the outside lane because that vehicle might be coming in. So, just imagine this scenario where we're travelling at say 50 or 60 miles an hour and there's a vehicle travelling at 80 miles an hour and that vehicle 
wants to go into the middle lane too. Yeah? So he's overtaking a slow vehicle in the middle lane, he's travelling at 80, he wants to move in, we're travelling at 60, we want to move out, we're both, both going through the same space on the road. And you can imagine what's going to happen, well, I've seen this happen many times in front of me. When we realise what's happening, we might have to suddenly cancel our lane changing manoeuvre and come back to the left. Yeah? Now, if we hadn't been checking our left mirror when we are moving out, we might not have noticed that perhaps there's a car behind us that wants to take this exit. Yeah? And as we start to move over, the car might start to come up the inside of us. Yeah? They shouldn't really overtake on the left, but they do. So as we're moving over, the car starts to move up the inside of us to take the exit. Now what do you think is going to happen when we see that car there and we come back to the left? Yeah, you guessed it. So this is why it's really important that we're aware of both mirrors. Even when you're moving to the right, when the gap that you're leaving on the left is clear, keep checking to make sure there's nothing coming up the inside. Because most of the time it won't be a car, it'll actually be a motorbike. Yeah, because motorbikes can accelerate very quickly. If the motorbike's been stuck behind you for a long time, maybe he didn't want to overtake you because he's taking the next exit. He's just waiting to get past you. You move towards the middle lane, he accelerates towards the left. You see that you can't move into the middle lane, you come back, you're not knock him off his bike. Yeah? That's why it's so important, whatever you do, to have an idea of what's happening on both sides and which of both mirrors. Yeah.